Seven years ago, we were approached by Kanye Cradenville um, to start what's called a community conferencing program based on the successful program that was already in place in Baltimore. So the, the root of community conferencing and restorative justice is people collectively dealing with an issue rather than the kind of confrontational um, way of dealing with things. Um, rather than accelerating the conflict, it transforms it into something else so that everyone that's been involved or affected by what's happened has a chance to decide how to move forward and that we try to bring as many people together as possible. So it's not just the two people that were in conflict. We do a lot of in-depth prep work to find out who needs to be there. If anybody who saw it or was even remotely involved, that way it's completely resolved by the time we are finished. Um, we, we have a large territory we cover. We cover all five counties of the Mature and we also have an office in Salisbury. So we accept referrals from all those areas. Um, yeah. We would like to see more referrals come to community conferencing, um, keeping kids out of the justice system, yeah. um, you know, keeping kids from being suspended, um, and bringing, especially in school referrals, you know, sometimes bringing the teachers and administrators together with kids they've had issues with and their families and really getting to the root of what's going on. There's definitely a stigma because I think sometimes it's thought of as not really doing something because people want to see a punishment. They want to see this, I want to see him punished and I want to see this. But if they take the time to come to a process like this, yeah. they realize in the end that maybe that's not exactly what they needed. Yeah. Um, when, when you're seeing something through somebody else's eyes, um, Definitely, especially I think with the um, with law enforcement, because let's say something does happen after the conference. Let's say there's another conflict after the conference. Then, well, you should have <laughs> you should have put him in jail. You should have suspended him. You should have done something more punitive than this yeah. this process. Um, I started with Mitchell Pro Bono last July, coming on as our new managing attorney, the first attorney um, that they've had on the staff. So. Um, I'm managing all the legal programs. Um, we have a wide range of legal services. So we provide elder law services, which I'm hoping we can talk a little bit more about. Um, we do family law. We also do housing and consumer debt issues. And we also do immigration services as well. You know, really, we're focused on low-income members of our community and who are, are not seen in the legal system. And um, it's, it's really a challenging issue. And what I hear so much from clients who I'm working with and talking to on a daily basis is that they feel invisible mm -hmm. in the system. And when they have a legal advocate who's working with them, they feel seen. And that is an extraordinary um, thing for people to be seen in the legal system. One thing that has really struck me, particularly in the last few months, is how many people are really living on the edge. You know, when you look at the statistics out there, like there was a, you know, recent article in the local paper about um, the low employment, unemployment rate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we haven't seen those numbers on the Eastern Shore for a long time. It's really challenging in rural communities to have strong employment numbers. Um, However, that is a false indicator um, from my perspective because we get dozens of people on a monthly basis who are contacting us about foreclosures. Mm -hmm. And the reason that they're in a foreclosure situation is because something's happened, um, a health issue has come up, somebody has lost work, somebody has become disabled, um, a, a big expense that was unexpected that needed to be paid for has now prevented somebody from making their mortgage payment. Um, and so those are the kinds of things that send people into an economic tailspin that is very difficult to recover from and it puts them on the edge of, of homelessness. And it is really truly um, startling how many people are in that situation right here in our community. Well, so one of the things that, that we um, really try to uh, focus on is outreach to seniors about getting their three end of life documents in place. So even people who feel like they don't have a lot of assets, it's really important for them to get their will done, um, to get their power of attorney so that somebody can make decisions for them um, if they are at a point where they're unable to make decisions for themselves and to have their health directive in place so that um, they have an agent who can help make healthcare decisions for them and also so their doctors know what they wanna see happen at the very end of life. 
So having those three basic documents is essential for every single senior. It doesn't matter what your income level, those are three things you've got to have. So we have clinics in every county on the midshore and in Wicomico as well. And so folks can sign up for an appointment and meet with an attorney and we can get those three documents set up for folks.